his special gift. Samson caught up. I am one man. Samson. Who are you? Who would you like me to be? Don't do it, Samson. Run, my dog. Run. Don't go to the tent, dog. That's Delilah. You unequally young player. Now you're up in the tent. Oh shit, you only got the drink. You had the drink, dog. <laughs> Freak nasty. She licked your your scar. I'm scared to look. I'm scared to look, Samson. It's a cold scene right here. Cold, man. Gonna kiss him all in the neck and in the nose and gonna cut that man's hair and call the bad people to come get him. Sad day. Here we go. She gonna cut it. She gonna cut it. I don't wanna watch! Strength now, savior of Israel. And where is your God? Now, Samson! Now, look at the letter! Now! They got you, dog! They... they got you, Samson! No, Samson! No! Well, you're unequally yoked with another person. So I got a few questions, man. You can ask yourself, ask your friends, ask the person you're in a relationship with, ask people in your church, ask everybody just to make sure, man, you're in a relationship that's wholesome, that's spiritual, that has purpose, spiritual purpose, and that's going somewhere, man. Y'all want to be headed for a sand for the lava kind of crash, man. You end up bald, naked, and blind somewhere, man, up in the Philistine camp. So let's get on to the questions. Are you ready for this? Some signs to know if you're unequally yoked. Here we go. I'm going to start off easy. Number one, when the person you're in a relationship with begins to see that you're getting a little too clingy and focus on them, do they A, enjoy it and love it, or B, put your attention and focus back on God where it should be. Yo, that's important. In relationships, especially the first couple of months, yo, you in love land. You, I love you, baby, babe, boo. You, all the pet names for each other come out within the first couple of months. Y'all just, y'all just deep in love. And you got to make sure that y'all ain't married yet. You know what I'm saying? You don't have any grace to fully put all of your affections on the other person without it going into idolatry. So, yo. Does the other person sense it? And if they do sense it, what do they do? Do they enjoy it or push your affections back towards God where it should be? Number two, since you've been in this relationship that you're currently in, have you found yourself sinning against God more now than before? Come on now, you know when you're together with somebody and they look good and you love them and you're alone together? Pluck, clack out! Blam! Sin often jumps off. But it takes a spiritually mature couple to see that taking place and put a stop to it. Number three, 
How often does the person you're in a relationship with initiate spiritual things like prayer, devotions, Bible studies together, and witnessing? Yo, if there's no initiation, especially from the doer's part, of spiritual things, then what are y'all doing? Can this brother lead you? Brothers, can she support you? And when you do initiate these spiritual things, what is her attitude like? Is it like, oh yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, I'll do the God thing with you, so I know you're a God person. <laughs> Number four, this is the growth test. Are there some areas in your life where you know you could not have grown in if it wasn't for this person's consistent spiritual help and advice? Yo, are they helping you grow straight up? And do they have the maturity and understanding to help you grow in your faith? Number five, this is where we involve outsiders into your relationship. So I want you to ask four of your closest spiritual friends if they honestly believe that your walk with God has improved or declined since you've been in this relationship. Hey, number six, ask those same four people if they believe that your personal calling and purpose before God, maybe in ministry or in the kingdom, ask them if that has been hindered or advanced since you've been in a relationship. Sometimes God's called you to be a minister or he's called you to evangelize, but since you've been in a relationship, you don't go out evangelizing no more. Since you all love you, love you, but this person do your spiritual duties, your spiritual calling has been neglected. <laughs> Number seven, boy, we're going to flip it right now. I want you to go to the person you're in relationship with and talk to at least two of their closest friends and go and ask them, hey, in what way do they think your relationship has hindered or blessed their friends spiritually? It's where it gets real. Don't you want to know the truth? Don't you want to know the truth? Look, if you're unequally yoked right now, this is how you get to the bottom of it. Start serving people around you that are spiritual, that can see things that maybe you can't see. <laughs> Number eight, ask some people to go to each of your churches, what kind of example has your relationship been setting at the church? And yo, if nobody knows, if no one can even answer that question, that could be a sign in and of itself. The person you're dating or courting, shouldn't that be something that's done out in the open for everybody to see and be blessed and encouraged by? Or can you not do that because you're ashamed that you guys aren't really living up to what the Bible says and you're compromising in the relationship? There's something to think about. Is your relationship an example at your church? And if no one knows about it, yo, in my Bible, the trees that bore bad fruit and no fruit both got cut down. <laughs> Number nine, can you give at least five biblical reasons how you know the person you're with right now is truly even born again? Biblical, stuff you can find in the Bible. Not just what I feel, well, well she loved God. Well, I, I, I know she loved God. You may not, no, I'm talking about for real, dude. For real, for real, man. Don't play yourself, dog. Remember Samson. Number 10. If the person your relationship with knew that your walk was being hindered, that you weren't growing spiritually since you've been with them, and maybe you weren't even ready to be in a relationship right now, do they love God enough to step away from you maybe for a season, maybe even permanently, to allow you to get your walk with God together because that's what's most important to them and in your relationship? And if you can't answer absolutely yes, yo, look into that. Something could be wrong right there. Maybe the person loves you more than they love God. If they love you more than God, I guarantee you guys are going to be unequally yoked. Because they want to have God's best for the relationship. It's my prayer. It's my hope. It's y'all getting involved in relationships that are spiritual, headed towards marriage, and that are serious before God. And most importantly, biblical. Stop falling in love with the wrong people, y'all. Remember Samson, man. Yo, getting with somebody that's unequally yoked, man, can not only destroy your walk, yo, can jack your faith up, also kill your purpose. Take it seriously. Yo, I'm Pastor Justin signing out. Thanks for watching. Pepe's, Pepe's. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and yes, I do speaking engagements. So if you want to book me to come out to speak to your school, your church, or just any event, you can book me by going to p4cm.com and clicking the booking tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to live a life that's totally unacceptable. That's totally unacceptable.